I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about how we are taking it to the next level. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook. Sometimes I go picking with my boyfriend, sometimes it's my best friend Sue, and sometimes it's my kids. But at the end of the day, it's all about having fun and hopefully just maybe making a profit. Okay, out on the table here in front of us, we have everything from the past two days of shopping at the flea market. And that includes everything that Andrew bought when he got there a couple hours earlier than I did. Yeah. And got some really great stuff from a few of our favorite box lot fellas. So, we're going to go over all of this stuff stuff um talk a little bit about what we paid for it and what i think we can get for it on ebay but first i wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about how we are taking it to the next level as far as business goes <laughs> for now because for now. i know they, they comment on that I know they do. Um, so we've got a couple of exciting things happening for us as far as like our eBay business and everything we've got going on. Uh, that includes bringing on my future sister-in-law um, to help us with listings. So you probably, if you follow us on eBay, have been seeing like a ton of listings popping up. So we've, uh, it's, it's not me. I haven't like suddenly yeah, gained and, 12 hours in a day. <laughs> and, and some of you may or may not know that my good friend Mark has been doing all the postcards and the bottles for us. Um, just adding to the items that we're able to offer for sale yeah. as quick as possible. So, yeah, so it does get overwhelming. Um, a lot of the items, I, I was reading a comment in yesterday's video um, a lot of the items, it takes us a little while to get them listed. Um, it's not that we hoard everything, because we don't. Not just everything. Some of it. Just everything that's on the mantle. <laughs> and upstairs. And but over. We are, we are working to progress and move forward and get more out to everybody. Absolutely. We have also bought a label printer. Yes, I love that thing. To help in the shipping department. <laughs> we bought a Rolo printer, which We're getting this efficient. Is not a paid endorsement. I paid for it. They did not send me one. Really excited about that. Andrew's been pleased with it. Feel so free far. to send us some labels though. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's been really pleased with that so far. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah it's absolutely. been working really well. It's been making my life so much easier. I'm able to get things done more efficiently, get them out faster. Um, Before we were just printing out the labels and taping them yeah, on and it was just a lot of work. But with the thermal printer, it just prints out the label. Yeah. It was a big investment, but with the volume that we're doing now, I yeah. think it's it. It's, it's, it's going to pay for itself in the long run. It's not, yeah. And the last and kind of most exciting news, but it's still in the early stages. We, we've, we've got a few months to go before the, yeah, the a couple thing months is completely to go. ready. But I'm so excited I have to tell them. It's, it's, it's going to be tailored. To what we're asking for so I, I yeah I'm excited I think we're going to be opening up a retail location so we went and looked at a couple locations today in Carlisle Pennsylvania yeah. and there's one place we really really like and there's a train coming so there's a train coming so you're gonna, gonna have gonna to wait aha uh -huh. and when we get back we'll go straight into the hall <laughs> All right, so that was a pretty quick train. But um, anyway, that was the really exciting stuff that we kind of wanted to share with you guys. So as it progresses and hopefully comes about, we will keep you guys posted, maybe share a little bit about the process. But I'm thinking we're gonna be bringing vendors in. 3,100 so. square feet, 3,200 square feet. So it's not immense. Well, we'll probably have room um, for about 10 vendors. Yeah, and then we'll have a processing area in the back for us to do all of this. Not in the So it's not room. in my house anymore. We get it out of the house finally. That's what I'm super excited about. So Absolutely. And she's happy, so I'm happy. <sighs> I'm happy. I'm so excited. I guess you guys can tell. Anyway, let's jump into this haul. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. 
Um, let's specifically, let's just kind of glaze over. Yes. Gla glance, glance. Let's get. Let's just like get all of the stuff that, all of the Limoges and all of the china porcelain stuff out of the way. Um, the value of this stuff is really hard to predict because the market right now. I mean, people aren't really. It's all over the place. It's all over the place. It's really like it, it, it's you. You got to find the right buyer for the right piece. It has to appeal to them. Yes, absolutely. Um, there are some pieces that I find absolutely stunning, mm -hmm. like the dragonfly plate. That's why I picked. I like the dragonfly. That was a win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like. I really like I that didn't. one. Where is the dragonfly? It's here. Right in That's not the dragonfly. No. Yeah, it's here somewhere. Here somewhere. <laughs> it was in yesterday's video. Yeah, it's not here. I don't know, I don't know um, where it ended up. That's not it. No? Oh, yeah, that is it. Ha yeah. <laughs> uh, ha, uh, <laughs> you were right. Okay. Uh, um, so, yeah, it's just it's really hard to predict how this stuff will, will go. But the good news is that we got it so cheap that... We can we, offer it cheap. We can, off, we can start it low and just see yeah. how it does. Absolutely. So, I'm excited to see how this stuff does. I mean, that's what I like about the flea market, and that's what I love about buying our stuff cheap is because yeah, I well, like to see how it, you know. And one of the things that really works well for us is we're able we're able to buy it in bulk mm -hmm. at a much lower price than buying it piece by piece by piece from 10 different people. Um, it helps out a lot, so. And another thing that makes predicting the value of this stuff difficult is a lot of these pieces were painted by art, like no unknown artists, so. Mm -hmm. It's it's not you know, eh. like this person was totally I don't know was that finger painting? I'm pretty sure. No, maybe not. They would just use their brush and they just basically did one of these. They didn't even paint flowers or anything like that. They just splatter some gold. But it, it was it was like posh in the Victorian times, and they you know just paint flowers. I do on like plates. I do like how I they dated it. I do like that. that yeah. It gives it provenance. Yes, absolutely. Now, one of the cool things about this particular piece that's worth talking about, um, you guys saw this. This is one of the pieces that Andrews and Andrews. No, no. <laughs> it's late. Leave me alone. They, they know we film these late. <laughs> um, this is one of the pieces that Andrew picked up uh, in his box. And I, when I was doing, when I was pulling everything out of the box, I was looking at the mark. Um, it is marked 1893, but the mark specifically says Balik. And I, yeah. I remember him pulling it out and looking at the mark and thinking, Balik. You know, I don't come across Balik very often. Actually, I don't think I've ever come across Balik. Uh, <laughs> so I was looking at it, and it didn't appear to be a Balik mark to me. And so Sam, my brother's um, fiance, was, was going to be listing some of this stuff, and she was asking about it, and I said, well, Balik is Ireland. But then, you know, I, I got to thinking about the mark and how I didn't recognize it, and yeah, that doesn't seem right. So I looked it up, and an interesting fact is that real early Lennox. Yeah, that they was really neat. They called it Balik. So Lennox originally tried to use the term Balik to describe early Lennox, and Balik was basically like, no, you can't do that. So, so this Balik mark is actually Lennox. It, it doesn't have anything to do with Balik. And actually, the pair of which also helps salt you date it to a specific shakers. time period. Even though somebody hand dated it, mm -hmm. it, it also helps you put it to a specific time Absolutely. period. These as well. Um, yeah, it's gonna focus. These are also they have that same Balik Lennox mark, which is I think is just a cool yeah. thing because I learned something in all of this. You know, I was excited that I found my first piece of wild. The leak, but at the same time, it just didn't sit right, and so a little bit of research goes a long way because I learned something. Now, also too, if I don't know if you noticed this, but the color of the hallmark on the yes. older one is pink, mm -hmm. and the color of the hallmark on the later one, dated 1916, is like a greenish mm -hmm. color. And a lot of the companies would switch up their hallmarks over the years, so that mm -hmm. really helps to date a piece. Even if yeah. it's not dated, you can look up hallmarks. Small nuances will will change over time. Um, For instance, your Gobel Ghost over there. Yeah. It is a newer mark on the bottom. 
Yes, it, yeah. is, it is West Germany, but it's probably yeah. 1980s. Yeah, because over the years, they had different marks, so that would help you date it. Right. So, anyway, She's enough cool about though. that. <laughs> so that, that was kind of, I, I didn't really want to get into doing too much with this, because I really can't tell you guys what it's worth. I'm not going to lie. I'm not an expert on this sort of stuff. I When I find it, I think it's pretty, and about the gist of it yeah. now the biscuit jar i think is just really cool yeah andrew was very proud of the biscuit jar <laughs> with the rattan handle i you know i like i really like this piece that i would probably expect to get i don't know 25 to 35 for maybe more if somebody really really falls in it. love with it it's a really nice piece yeah yeah and i do like that they did again sign it's and like date the this kids one. got some ketchup on there though that's easy. It's only outside of the glaze. We're good. Um, B.V. Bowman, 1934. Yeah. Alright, so let's talk about some of the other stuff that we got that we can talk about the value of. For instance, these little Boyd Owl Bells. Insert clip here. You can ring my bell. Ring my bell. Uh, I just thought these were really cute. You guys know I have a thing for owls, and then I saw these in the box. It's like, all right, I need those. And now I have passed these up week after week after week because I know they don't have a whole lot of value. They probably are worth $10 to $15 a piece. Uh, the painted one probably being worth, I want to say, $15 to $18. It's a little bit more. That, just like what? Uh, what do they call that? Burmese glass. Yeah. Yeah, that's a Burmese glass. Oh, it's it's it has very subtle pink tones, uh, but it is a Burmese glass and it's got acorns painted on it. So I liked that one. But nice fall theme. We only paid a buck a piece for those, so <laughs> there's some profit to be made there. Uh, another piece that I grabbed was this vase. Hmm, I wasn't overly thrilled with that He wasn't over, I could tell whenever I asked about it that he wasn't overly thrilled. The guy seemed very, very certain that it was Weller. I wasn't sold on the fact that it was Weller. Uh, I don't know. But I decided to just go with my gut on it for $15. Now, if it didn't have a chip on it, I could make my money back. I'm sorry, not a chip, a crack. A giant crack that, that we didn't notice. Yeah. It does have a crack, but this is actually um, Robinson Rand's bottom pottery. It's not Weller, and I'm not even sure what the pattern is on it. But it's a nice piece, and if it didn't have the crack, I can I can make my money back on it. But it does have a crack, so I'm not really sure. So wow. we're offering it cheaper and less than what we paid for it. <laughs> As is, <laughs> yeah, basically. I was really bummed when I found that crack. Yeah, I mean, you got to remember, there's going to be a dog every once in a while. You, you're you not going to hit a home run on every single item you pick up. We do hit dogs. We do have them. But we we did make some money on the house. So yes, okay. yes. So that piece, if it didn't have the crack, I'd probably expect $25 to $35 for that. Because the, the, the value in the, the pottery has gone down quite a bit. Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, I got this painting here. Now, I just really liked this painting. It kind of reminded me a lot of New England Forest. I don't know, in the fall. That's why I liked it. You guys know my tattoo is Robert Frost because I grew up in New England and it's kind of, you know, homage to my childhood in the woods basically every single day following the rock walls. Um, so when I saw that painting, it just it kind of reminded me of, of New England. So I grabbed it. Um, there was an issue with the canvas, but it seems to have straightened itself out. I was a little concerned and a lot of you suggested spritzing some water on the back and how it would tighten itself. But I don't know if the way it was sitting in the box, it was on top of something because when I got it home, I couldn't even find the little dimple anymore so I was like all right cool now it is signed but I couldn't find anything on the artist I don't think there are anyone special uh, I'm really just selling it for the aesthetic not really the artist's name so I'm not really sure how much that would go for the artwork you know I buy artwork that I like and yeah. that's really the best I can do because I'm, I'm not trained in it I don't know 
I don't I couldn't even tell you if that was acrylic or oil honestly I could just tell you that it's trees and I like it so so right now I think it's at $25 or something like that I don't know. all of this stuff is listed on eBay right now yes that is the advantage of having Sam helping us yes she's on top of it I didn't see the ginger jar yet no, that's because I wasn't sure if it was a ginger jar or a mustard jar, because you were up in the air on it. Yeah. And I also don't know its age, and just it's the question marks. 1850s, 1860s. It's the question marks that, like, don't usually make it very quickly to eBay. And that's a question mark right there. Um, I really like it too. I may hoard this for a little while. Really? I have one up in my office that you've hoarded for a while. You could sell that one. <laughs> okay, you can sell it. Okay, fine. I'm done hoarding it. <laughs> that was really quick, actually. Uh, so, <laughs> I'll have Sam list that tomorrow. Awesome sauce. Uh, I also picked up this piece, this one, um, That's cool. Bruntley, where unfortunately it does have some chipping of the, the paint. The paint is chipping, not the actual ceramic itself, but the paint is chipping. And these actually don't sell for very much, but I really like the design. Um, they typically sell between $15 and $20 at the most. This one has the original label. And it has damage, so I wouldn't even expect to get 15 to 20 for it, probably less than that. 8 to 10. Yeah. But I saved it from being whisked away to yeah. the unknown, so I liked it. It appealed to me. I grabbed it. It's definitely going to appeal to somebody. Yes, and I'm going to at least make my money back. It'll go somewhere that is not the landfill, and that will make me happy. I feel like I did my job. Yes. Uh, this is another piece that Andrew picked out. And we kind of talked about this in yesterday's video, but I just want to point out the fact that this is, I think, one of my favorite pieces. It's not focusing. I know it's not. I have to do this. Ah, oh, there it is. I have to say, this is absolutely one of my favorite pieces that he brought back in the box. And the reason I'm bringing it up again is because we debated this for so long before yeah. we listed it, trying to decide what it is, who makes it, where it comes from. And we just, it, oh God, yeah. it was one of those pieces That's that stumped stumper. us. And it's so hard to search because it has a cameo on it. But you can't search for cameo glass without getting cameo glass. And, and it's definitely not cameo glass. It's clear glass that's been painted. So, oh, very frustrating. Anyway. um, Anything else that I should talk about? Mm, you want to talk about these? I mean, what, what else? What is there to say? I mean, it's just a beautiful Art Deco piece. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just some dishes and a tray. You guys saw them in yesterday's video if you watched it. Is this your favorite? It is. I absolutely love it. I love Art Deco, and this is just phenomenal. I was very impressed with this, I'm not going to lie. You did good. You did really good. I do want to make mention that somebody, did what you said, if somebody had commented about somebody it. Somebody commented on Instagram that it's possible that these were touched up. So here's what I did last night after, after that comment was made. Um, I took my jeweler's loop and I looked at the gold where it meets the black. And some of the places, uh, the gold actually overlaps the I black. Yeah. So... That would lead me to believe that the black was laid down first um, and then the gold would have been filled in. Now there are some spots where it's opposite. So it's really hard to tell for sure if there are touch-ups done or not because they yeah. just yeah. kind of... It, it, they did a nice job on it case, though. Any case, it's just it's, an incredible yeah. Art Deco piece. And all, pieces. all three pieces are done. The same, and they're all done very nicely. Oh yeah. So. Absolutely. What else? What else? Anything else that's like super mind blowing? I mean, awesome. the only other thing I can think of is the little hors d'oeuvre forks that I got that I actually don't have here. I'm not sure where they ended up, but I picked out these little hors d'oeuvre forks when I grabbed the planter. Yeah. Um, and I don't see them on the table. I'm not sure where they ended up, but uh, what's interesting about those 
is that they are not silver, but they are intended to look like their silver counterparts because mm -hmm. there are silver sets of those hors d'oeuvre forks that are made and sold um, that are marked silver. But looking at the ones that I got, you can tell by the way it's, they're just, they're not the quality that right. the silver ones are that you find online. So it was interesting to find them because they're really good reproductions. Yeah, they're heavily plated, mm -hmm. but there are spots where I can see the green coming through. And on silver, you're not going to have green bleeding through. Yeah. So. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Now there could be there could be green on there from contact with something mm -hmm. copper, mm -hmm. but you can tell the difference when it's pitted and corroded. Yeah, and that was the case. Yeah. So, all right. Why don't you talk about some of the stuff that you grabbed? Man, I mean, I just, I don't know. I just, I just, I just went to, I just went to town. Um, this came, this actually came from Bill. Um, we did talk about this in the haul video. Yeah, but I didn't make it into the video. Okay, because it's got, it. yeah, I wasn't sure what the inside of that would have been for. Yeah, I know, we discussed that, and I'm not really sure. I feel like... There I've are, before, okay, I know now, what it is, and I just can't. There are doinks inside mm -hmm. of this, but they're on the inside. The lid is what really makes this piece. Um, it's it's almost like a Lady Liberty with an eagle in her lap. It's just oh, come on, focus. That thing is really cool. It is a neat design. And then here is the, the dropping it. <laughs> There's the inside. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what those little grooves are. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And they're worn. Yeah, the eagle is eating out of her hand. That's that's crazy. That's awesome. I love that piece. It might get hoarded a little longer than the <laughs> jar. Um, and the only mark on the bottom is a not set of numbers. And it looks like a 1 1 1 2. I don't know. Um, wow. What else? Shakers. We talked about the shakers. Got those. We talked about those. Ooh, the Bennington. Mm-hmm. That you put back down. And yes. I I'm like, isn't this Bennington? Why is this still here? But. The condition is. The condition is why I put it back down. Um, however, we decided that it is a really nice old piece. And it really did need to be pulled out of there. Um, the handle's intact. I dig a lot of these actually in the outhouse pits, um, teapots and pitchers, stuff like that. They, they come out of the outhouses. So I like, you know, complete. That's awesome. I love that piece. Uh, I did snag a piece of transferware. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's not marked. It is. It's got a pretty pattern. And I love the color. The color is like a really nice purplish color. The leaf dish. Yep. The leaf dish is on the, in there. With the little salts. That I, actually, when I pulled that out, the little salts, they were all piled up in that. Were they? Yeah. And then you got a set of the same shakers that I picked out a set of the same shakers. Yep. But we don't know who picked out the chip ones. I'm just gonna blame her. She got the check ones. Oh, you're funny. <laughs> but it's just on the bottom though, so it's really not all that bad. Mm -hmm. Do you know what our total spend was? Um, so I we spent a total of sixty dollars with Eric. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I spent twelve with Bill that morning. Um, and twenty when I got there. Oh, I almost forgot this. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. So, of so there's 48 on there, so that would be pre-1959. Mm -hmm. This is the beginnings of a bird quilt, state birds. It has 48 state birds embroidered on it, and it is just the backing. There is no quilt work on it. It is just embroidery, mm -hmm. but it has 48 state birds embroidered on it, and um, I grabbed it. It's 102 inches by 78 inches. 
That's massive. It's huge. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I know. I was measuring it and I'm like, oh my gosh. So anyway, it's, you know, it needs to be finished by somebody who has the seal to finish it. So I listed it pretty low um, and I figured yeah. somebody would buy it who can finish it. So. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you got to figure that's late fifties mm -hmm. probably mid to late fifties. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. At the, at the latest. Um, yeah. Very cool. So this is kind of everything that we got at the flea market. Our total spend was probably close to, I want to say a hundred dollars. Yeah. I'd say between a hundred and 120 with mm -hmm. all the little ins and ins and outs of the little other yeah. booths here and there. Um, a couple dollars here, a couple dollars there. Yeah. Yeah. Roughly about 120. It's going to uh, stop. I'm going to restart. All right. There we go. <laughs> so I have no doubt that we're going to make our money back. Um, like I said, all this stuff is already listed and I can actually say for certain that we've already made our money back. So I'm excited to see how some of these pieces do, especially all of the plates and the dishes that are hand painted uh, that we rescued. Yeah. They're, they're just some really nice pieces. I, I will be going to the market early. On Sunday. As, as many weeks as I possibly can. Um, the, the only reason that Joss isn't able to go so early with me is because the kids are here at the house. Um, yeah. And we don't want to drag them out at six o'clock in the morning. That's not, they're, they're five and eight. That's not fair to them. Let them get a little sleep. Um, and then when my parents pick them up at eight to take them to Sunday school, she works her way over and meets up with me and then we do our thing together. So yeah. it, it and works I head for over us. To church, so. yeah, it, it, it obviously works for yeah. us. So we're going to, we're going to keep doing that on Sundays and, and I kind of like doing a mystery unboxing. I thought it was fun. So yeah. we'll have to do some more of those. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. I really, cause yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll have to do some more of those when you go early, but it is, it's like giving you Christmas gifts for like 40 minutes. I like it. I like that. It's awesome. <laughs> Christmas gifts that you don't have to spend lots of money on. I know, right? And, and I get just so And I don't excited. have to keep them in my house Yeah, either. and then we make more money back. It's <laughs> great, right? Christmas! Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, no, no, that was definitely a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. Um, hopefully we can do so well every week. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be weeks where it's not going to be so fruitful. Um, you know, he, he took a vacation week and that his particular booth was not so fruitful. We, we wound up making out okay with yeah. the rest of the place, but... <laughs> Um, you gotta, it's you gotta, always hit or miss. you never know what you're gonna find. Yeah, exactly. That's what we like about it. Yep. So. It's the thrill of the hunt. <laughs> All right. So anyway, by the time you guys are seeing this video, I'm going to be going out with Sue. So today is a Sue day. Um, we'll do some shopping at the thrift stores. It's been a while since we've done a thrift store video, but, um, I gotta go out of this video. And in the morning, I gotta wake up bright and early and get the kids off to school. Yep. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Later. Bye. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook.